Okay, so this is a fairly long tutorial, um, and and what I want to show you here is how to georeference a, a, an image in QGIS. But uh, and the image we're going to use is that PDF document that you sent me with the base layer for the provincial, and then I guess we've got forests here as well. So if you want to overlay your pump data with that um, background image, just follow through this tutorial, and I'll show you how to do that. There are a few snags along the way. But hopefully we can work those out and you'll be able to, to do it on your system. What you would need for this tutorial is some sort of imaging package where you can convert a PDF into a JPEG, a PNG, or a, a TIFF image. Okay, well I've converted mine into a JPEG here. And then ultimately I just turned on the Burundi uh, boundary to see if my georeferencing was fairly accurate. And then the, the T... Um, or the, or the pumps as per as per the, the, the spreadsheet that you sent me. And if you zoom in, that's pretty much what you get. Now, that's that's what we got. So so hopefully this will be a fairly useful tutorial. Um, yeah, let's let's get on with that now. Okay, so let's set about doing that. We want to first of all just have a look at this PDF. So I need to open up the PDF and decide what I can use for control points. Okay, so now if we're going to be georeferencing an image, we need the program to, to use control points so that it can spatially reference the, the image. And looking at this, we can use a number of different things as control points. We can use physical features like the, the actual um, the country boundary but uh, I'm actually already seeing some grid points here. So grid points are perfect because we can add the exact grid point in the Latin longitude. So we're going to use those. So let's first, I'm just going to minimize that so I can open up a Excel spreadsheet and I'll stick this down here. I'm going to create a new one. And I want three columns for point. Let latitude and longitude and there it's going to be a point A, a point B, a point C and a point D and point A is going to be up here, point B, point C and point D. We need to um, add control points from uh, spread out across the drawing to get a, a, a nice transformation. If they're all in the middle then the, the image of the middle will be, the, the parts of the image in the middle will be in the correct place, but there may be some distortion on the edges. So we need to try and make sure we've got uh, control points spread out from around the drawing. So let's go and see what these values are for the point A. Just zooming in a bit. Okay, I can see that one's 29. 29 and 2.3. Okay, so now 2.3 is actually not 2.3, it's uh, 2 degrees and 30 minutes. Uh, so 30 minutes is equivalent to 0.5 uh, decimals because there are, there are 30 minutes in every degree and there are 60, well there's 60 minutes in every degree and 30 of them is halfway through so we can make that 0.5. So this latitude here is going to be it's minus because it's south, so it's minus 2 point. Well, let's just start out by making it a number. So we're going to go 2.5 for latitude, and then the longitude is 29. And we're going to move along this latitudinal line to find the next one, which is over here. And the longitude for that one, you can see, is 30.5. And it's the same longitude, so it's 2.5. So remember, we just we're just making we just instead of converting these, well, we're converting these in our heads, uh, and then just typing in 0.5 for the 30 minutes. Right. So now we can move over to point C, which is going to be down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So there's four point four degrees 30 minutes. So we're going to call that 4.5, and it's also 29. So 29 as well. And then that's, those, uh, those values are all going to be repeated for this last point here, where it's 4.5, and then it's 30.5. Okay. So now this latitude value we need to convert into um, south, so we need to times it by minus 1. So I'm going to just going to call this 
latitude 2 and then I'm going to say just type in a little equation here I'm going to say this one value times minus 1 okay so then we got those values okay so I'm happy with that let's just make sure that the formatting for all of these is number okay that is fine decimal degrees of two decimal places of two is fine okay so you see they're all align right so we now can happily assume that the program is seeing them as numbers let's save this as an Excel spreadsheet and then we'll save it out as a finally we'll save it out let's just maximize this we'll save it out as a CSV so we can import it into QGIS okay so where are we going here we need to go to this file tables just call it grid okay that's saved as the Excel spreadsheet oh, let's save it out as a CSV and we'll just you can call it grid as well okay okay and the reason instead of just typing in a minus there I was worried that the program was going to see this as text so what I wanted to do is just uh, type in an equation to to make sure that it's sort as a number so so that value times by minus one is minus one so that's actually a number uh, whereas I worry when you type in a, a little minus sign in front of a number the program will often just see it as text and uh, for some reason I have tr trouble converting it into a number so that's that's the reason I did that let's hope it worked okay so we can close these down now what I need to do is I need to convert this PDF into a image format that can be opened up in QGIS so I'm going to open up an image package let's just open up that PDF this is quite a big PDF so it might take a while to to rasterize uh, and import so while that's processing I think what I'll do is just pause this video okay so that took a while to to bring in to rasterize and bring in but it's in okay so I've actually been going around in circles a bit here because I have exported this image already but uh, what happened is when I imported it into QGIS I noticed that the little ticks which are viewable up here in the top left hand corner of our drawing where are they they had disappeared that they weren't being coming they weren't coming through see it says look how fine and tiny that is now when I export that as a JPEG it's just too it's just too faint it's just too faint to come through so I'm not able to georeference it so what I quickly want to do is in this image package I'm just going to create a new layer and I want to put a dot on there so let's see what little uh, things I can use okay so that that's one hopefully that comes through it should do so let's do the others well hopefully that comes through look I can see it from here so <laughs> hopefully it comes through so I just need to do the other ones okay where is this one this one's over there you see how faint it is I can hardly see it so this little one what I think I need to do here maybe is just change the color to something I can see so in the same same way I did for the other first one I'm just going to add a new dot there that one I should be able to see I'll just leave the others as red and it was so it's down here there it is there you can sort of just see it down here same place and the last one point C I think we called it there it is on the left there that uh, actually that one's not quite 100 percent on the spot but we can still see it right now this I can save out well first of all I want to clip out the the stuff that I don't need to see on the final uh, base layer or the final raster image so what I want to do is just come in here I'm going to use this tool and you may have a different image package or no if you don't have an image package 
Um, you might actually struggle to do this. But yeah, let me know how it goes. Okay, so I'm removing the, the grid. And I just want to delete. Okay, I don't want to delete that one there. So I want to delete that portion from that image. And then similarly, I want to delete this little section here. And deselect that. Okay, so now hopefully I can save this as a JPEG. And I'm going to call it Burundi. Let's see if that comes through. It saves out fairly quickly. And there it is. Pretty big. So it's a pretty big JPEG. And you see the dimensions of the actual drawing, or actual the map are pretty big as well. So we can close all of this stuff. And let's open up QGIS. Right, so QGIS is opened up. We're going to open up a blank project, and we want to add the CSV grid um, that we created using Excel, and from the the grid of that PDF. So it's a CSV. Just to navigate to the grid CSV, there it is there, and then the longitude is right, but it's using this latitude column. We need to use the negative latitude column. There we go, and that should add. And we're looking at those positions, they look like they're in the right place and I'll just change the color quickly uh, you don't always like these browny colors uh, particularly when you're working with with imagery they don't always stand out nicely blue should be good <clears throat> okay so now what we need to do is make sure that our geo referencer is turned on so under plugins we select manage and install plugins and there's one called the GeoReferencer GDAL. So if yours is not turned on, you'll need to turn it on here. And then we can say close once that's turned on. And under raster, there should be a GeoReferencer option. So what that does is it opens this GeoReferencer tool and docks it into this window. And what we're going to do now is add a, we can turn off this GC table. We don't actually need that. And then we'll turn on or open up the raster we just created. There it is, Burundi. Okay, it's been added in. All right. Okay, I'm fairly happy with things there. I hope I can find those points. I might need to pan around quite a bit. But what I need to do is just make sure that there's some snap settings set. So for the project, I've went to snap settings. And I'm going to click on that little uh, magnet. And I want advanced, advanced configuration. And I want to be able to snap snap to the grids. And those default settings are fine. So, so now when I add a control point, it'll just snap to a point. I don't have to zoom in there. But I will have to zoom in here. So let's see if we can find the first one. And I need to maybe take my time here because previously I overlooked. There it is there. Okay, so this one is that one. So what we do is we tell the program to add a point. And we get as close as we can to the center of that tick. And that's probably a better accuracy than the actual red dot that I put there. So you click your first point, then we say, okay, choose the actual point from the map canvas. And now you'll see where the snapping comes in. As we get closer to the, the point we want to capture, it creates a little pink box. And we can say, okay, and now it's got its first control point. So now we can zoom to the full extent. And under here somewhere. Ooh, this is the danger. There it is there. Whoa. Okay. Great. So I can't see it. I was a bit worried I wasn't going to be able to see them. Select that one from Map Canvas. There we go. Okay. Zoom to the full extent again. Oh, this one's over here somewhere. There it is there. There it is. Yeah. Like I said, it... it those little dots I put on are helping me locate them, ultimately. Uh, if I'd spent more time, I probably would have been able to find each of these little ticks. But it's speeding things up, which always helps. Okay, and then this one is down here somewhere. Ooh, can't see this one, so let me just pan. 
Is that it down there? Can't be that one. No, that's not that. Just pan up this way slightly. Okay, I'm going to zoom to the full extent again. Just make sure I zoom into the correct area. I think it's around about. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if it take a bit more time, um, it will uh, allow me to see it. Okay, so there it is there. It's in the middle of this point. That's pretty good from canvas. Move this out the way. Click on that one. Okay, so now we've added four control points. So now all we need to do is tell the program to create a little text file to, to reference that. So we go to the georeferencer settings and we choose transformation settings. And linear is fine. <coughs> we're going to go nearest neighbor. And we're not going to recreate an image. All we're going to do is create a little text file to reference the existing uh, raster that we've imported. So we go create world file only. Loading queue just went done. Click OK. And now that is the transformation settings set. But we haven't referenced anything yet. We just need to click on this play button to reference the image. So we click on play. And there we go. So now we can actually close down the georeferencer. Because if we're looking at this, we can see it looks like it's in the right place. And one way to check if it's in the right place is we'll just add some other layers. So let me add a vector map layer for the Burundi national boundary. I think I've got something in here. Is it under the, one of these ones here, vector? Let's um, just change these to shape file and uh, okay let me rewind actually i'll go back into vector political burundi boundary and that's close it's close you can see it's not a hundred a hundred percent but it is pretty close so what you could do instead of those, it's 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 either an issue with the the grid that I added, an issue with the accuracy of this vector file, or an an issue with my um, georeferencing. But ultimately, that is how you would add a um, or or turn a raster PDF into a um, a georeferenced base layer. So now what you can do is use this as a background and add your um, your pump data and you may want to just add some other stuff like a, a country bound boundary like this and possibly make it transparent in one just to sort of thicken up on the existing boundary you know so because we're using a raster image uh, it's not uh, that clear uh, the other thing you might want to do is turn on the the interprovincial boundaries but at least now you've got that PDF image as a base layer and that is how you do that so it's quite it's quite involved um, but it is doable so so if you don't have the actual layers to create the 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 map that you want you can take a PDF and use it as a base mapping okay and then you can add your pump data so where was that pump data so if I went to CSV I think yeah I think that's it Longitude and latitude. Just add those. Okay, that looks like they're in the right place. And I know I'd save my styles somewhere. I'm going to load my styles from a file, please. From file, from file. Okay, I've got to go find the file. There it is. Okay, load style, apply. Okay. Yeah, you could end up with something like that. So, so that is the the styles added as per per the rules that I'd set out in that previous tutorial that I sent you. And this is pretty much where we where we get to. So that's how you do that.